<laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that was the episode. I have the I have a baseball yeah. from that show. Me too. You, is it signed by Jesse and David? It is. I think it's signed by Chris Carter too. Oh. Look at see that he's like upping everything I say. <laughs> Our first guest is an actor, writer, and director whose credits include the underappreciated series Key West, The Extendables, and just about every version of Star Trek since Next Generation. Today he joins us to discuss the role of an alien bounty hunter. Please welcome Brian Thompson. Hey! hey, hey. Uh, be beauty queen wave because of all the parts I've played uh, in uh, beauty pageants. <laughs> How are you doing today, sir? Uh, LG, just like the electronics company, life's good. <laughs> right on, right on. Everything we is well. Are, I, we are broadcasting today live from the La Cunada, Los Angeles location of my kitchen. So <laughs> if uh, anybody needs anything to eat, I'm taking requests. The refrigerator's right there. Look at that. See that? The refrigerator got all that wonderful notes on it. And, uh... And dishwasher's down there because we do clean in here once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's right. You know, uh, your your microwave door is open, so. Uh... Oh, uh oh, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> that's my microwave door. You're yes. Right. <laughs> While he's adjusting that, our next guest is an actress whose body of work includes The West Wing, Sons of Anarchy, and Oliver Stone's Nixon. Today, she joins us to discuss the role as the agent of both the FBI and later the Smoking Man, Monica Reyes. Please welcome Annabeth Gish. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm I'm good. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. I'm in Vancouver, where it all began, mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, I'm excited about talking all things X Files. Oh, absolutely, Dean. So glad to have you here. Uh, and finally, our last guest is an actor whose credits include The Commish, Kyle XY, and Continuum. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of the duplicitous and enigmatic Alex Krychek, and possibly the guy in season one, the episode Gender Bender, who had a rather unusual close encounter. And we'll leave it at that. Please welcome Nicholas Lee. Oh, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Exciting. Oh, good to have you here. So, uh, uh, Midnight Cowboy behind you, right? Uh, true. Midnight Cowboy, yeah. And my poster from working when I was on SNL and another movie I did there and, and some pictures of my dog. I didn't know you were on SNL. I was very quickly, yeah. Me and uh, David and I, uh, David and I playing our characters and uh, Will Ferrell playing Janet Reno. Oh my God, wow. that's awesome. I will never, ever, ever forget it. It was, uh, and uh, Jimmy Page and Puff Daddy were musical guests. Uh, and I'd, I'd never been to SNL and it's like 57, you know, it's like how many floors up off the street in a building, yep. which I never even thought of. And at the end of the show, I got to stand right beside Jimmy Page and it was just, I'll ne like, it's just oh, one of those things you'll never forget. What, were you terrified? Was it like terrifying that to be live on? <laughs> uh, you know, not really. I had my responsibilities were, were pretty minimal. Uh, really, it was a scene between David and, and Will Ferrell. Uh, yeah. But um, it, it was it was it was nerve making for sure. I bet. Yeah, but wow. completely wonderful and unforgettable. I'm in awe, Nick, and uh, I sit here I jealous. Let's see your let's let's see your liquid oatmeal. Let's look. What's that all about? Well, I I poured that for I poured it into this cup for Anna Beth, and it splashed onto my keyboard. Oh, uh, transmission! Oh no! You that was oatmeal? I was I was trying to impress Anna Beth with my oatmeal. <laughs> We're hundred percent sure it's oatmeal. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, once again, thank you all for joining us here at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Uh, as always, uh, we miss hosting you and guests like yourselves on our physical stages, but we look forward to the day when the world gets a little back to normal and we'd have you back on our stages and in front of your fans and uh, she'll be back. <laughs> so what I would love to do is our team right now is going through our chat room and pulling questions for you. In the meantime, I would love to hear how each of you individually came into your roles on X-Files. Brian. Okay, um, 
I did not know about the X-Files. I had been in Europe doing Dragonheart for the months preceding the interview. I'd only been home a couple of days and I met um, Chris Carter and uh, Rob Who? Bowman. Who? Rob <laughs> Bowman. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, at, at the, um, at Fox Studios. And it was a, they hadn't, they said they hadn't written any lines for the character yet. So it was just a nice meet and greet, which I love, you know, you know, <laughs> preparation, take a shower, get in the car. <laughs> and, and a couple days later, I was flying to Vancouver. And, and the rest is history. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Adabeth, how about you? Because your character had a, uh, a interesting, a very, rather interesting uh, character arc throughout the entire scope of the series. Well, I was, uh, I was the last one to join. Um, I joined for eight and nine and then the, the re redo redos. But, um, but I had to, you know, sort of fight tooth and nail uh, for the role. I auditioned and multiple times met with Frank and Chris and, uh, and then tested for it and, and got the job. And it was great. It was, uh, it was, it was a very different time of television making. I think we would all agree. It was, mm -hmm. you know, back in the day when they made 22 episodes and there was money to burn and you could shoot 16 hour days and, you know, it, it was amazing to join. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Nicholas. Uh, I had auditioned and gotten a role in the very first season playing an entirely different part. Uh, in Gender Bender season one, uh, where I had sex with a woman who turned out to be a man. Uh, I think that's the way it went. And um, is that uh, something you can recover from? Par pardon me? Well, I mean, you know, d define recover, you know what I mean? But anyway, so uh, the and then when the second season came around and they were they were looking to cast a role of cry check, um, I went in and read and 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 got it, and it was sort of that that fast. It was. Fast and Furious, Jillian, of course, Jillian, it's Jillian, right? Yes. Jillian uh, was uh, pregnant at the time, and they needed they needed to give her some obviously some some time off, and uh, and and they inserted this character, and it was supposed to be three episodes, and it ended up being like seven years or whatever. Wow. Yeah. Did they did they give you any uh, sort of a, a heads up maybe that they were gonna, no just it was just as you got the scripts that's what happened. That was always the way, and which in fact I relative to this character I loved it because there wasn't necessarily a followable arc on where he was going to go. It's not like I need to know in season one what was happening to him in season seven it, or, or, or eight. It, or it just um, you know every time you opened it, I always say it was like Christmas morning because you were opening up a script and you never knew what was going to happen, whether you were going to be hanging from seventeen floors by one arm or. Uh, puking alien out of your eye or, um, you know, uh, on and on and on running out of exploding cars. It was always, it was always exciting and it was always uh, wildly different. Very fortunate. So yeah, ab absolutely. Indeed. Indeed. So what, uh, what's been your favorite memory of being associated with the X-Files franchise? Um, you know, that's a good question, right? Because it's multifaceted. I mean, not only have I made friendships, um, which are kind of are the things that, that tend to last, um, but there's all the memories of being on the show and all the, all the exciting things that I got to do, you know, which if, if I'd been on one of the CSI franchises, you know, it's a sort of, it's exactly the same really kind of every week. And, but I, I got to do so many different things. It'd be on, like I said, on SNL, um, I went to the white house. I, uh, skydived with the golden Knights, uh, who are the crack us, uh, skydiving team, uh, one and on and on just a remarkable list of, of, um, experiences. So it's kind of hard to pick one. They're also, they're also good. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I wish you would have saved Nick for last because I didn't get to go to the White House and I haven't done SNL. Huh. What about Skydiving? This memory was because of the X-Files, I got to go to a convention one time and I got to sit next to Annabeth for two days. No way. Two, <laughs> yeah, right, she was at the table right next to me. How, how close would you say you were to her? Oh, I got as close as, you know, uh, legally 
laws allow. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, the fondest thing for me, genuinely, what warms my heart the most, aside from being near Anna Beth, is getting was getting to go back year after year and work with the same people. It's it's the closest thing you have in Hollywood to a family and having a family reunion each year. Yeah. So that was uh, uh, the familiarity of going to these people that your heart starts to have affection for. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and to get to return into that environment where, you know, people, people at least pretend they like you. Oh, we like you. Trust me. And also, you know, I don't, I don't want to take anything away from Annabeth's time, but also the conventions, right? And I, 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 I mean that because, you know, I've traveled like all over the world now to, to Chile and to, you know, I mean, like just remarkable experiences and fans are always so kind. They're generous. They're gentle for the most part. You know, they're funny. Um, it's uh, uh, it's kind of exhausting, but it's also a chance to see the world and meet meet new people, which I'm a fan of. Absolutely, absolutely. And Annabeth. I, I mean, I to piggyback on both of the, the gents and what they said, it's so everything. I feel the family aspect of what we did, you know, you can't help but when you do work for that amount of time. And um, and again, I was only there for the last, the, you know, really entrenched in the two years at the end, but still made friendships and relationships that matter. The acting experience was incredible you know, um, the action, the, the material that I feel like I learned. Um, and it, it has truly been such a joyful uh, addendum mm -hmm. and surprise to do these conventions because not only have I reconnected and really spent this odd like quality time with people like Brian and Nick and Mitch and um, Robert and Jillian and David a couple at once, I think. But, you know, I mean, it really has spider webbed into this beautiful extra community, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I was speaking recently with another actor who hasn't gone to conventions yet and he was a little worried. And I said, honestly, like it's it's this human experience and it's mm -hmm. connective and and just meaningful. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's always a secret pleasure of mine at, at the conventions to just see that first day in the green room and see casts Castmates reunited. They haven't seen each other in a while. See the hugs. How you doing? How's Jimmy? Yeah, we did. Kindergarten. All that stuff. It's just, it's a delight to watch to see the camaraderie in action. And that he always passed away. Me. Actually, what's that? Jimmy passed away. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But to see that as well, pulled over into the tables, seeing uh, celebs yourselves with their fans, and it, it just yeah, just seeing seeing the mutual love and admiration. It's it's mm -hmm. it's always it's always a pleasure to watch. And again, the world will get back to normal, not as soon as we'd like it to, but absolutely we look forward to the day of getting you back on our and uh, on your tables in front of your fans. Yeah. In the meantime, I also just, I just wanted to say too, you know, I, I I'm only speaking for myself here, but you know, I, I sort of. Um, it, it, the good fortune of being on a show like this, you know, I could have, you can be on all kinds of shows. I mean, or not, you, you may not work at all. If you're an actor, some actors just don't work, unfortunately, mm. some act, some work more than others, but to have the opportunity and the sort of the good fortune to get on a show like this, that kind of has legs seemingly like forever. Mm -hmm. And, um, and to, 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 to sort of accrue all that experience through the good fortune of being on a show, at the end of the day, you just I personally just sort of feel like I'm lucky. Totally, I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, we have got questions from our audience, so I'll ask uh, Christina to roll our first one. And from Ab, uh, our good friend, number one Trek fan, who comes to many of our Q and A's, would favorite like to know. Roll. Yes, uh, should I know what has been your favorite role to play on anything? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that we were paid for or just a role in life uh yeah. anything as an as an actor either paid or unpaid yes go brian go uh that really is an easy one for me i uh, i know a lot of you might find this hard to believe but i have played a lot of antagonistic characters who were filled with venom and had to spew a 
great amount of unsavory thoughts, words, and actions and deeds. Uh, but however, one time, my longest job ever was playing the Zen Buddhist sheriff of Key West, Florida. Yes. We lived in Key West. I, uh, you, our, our moderator mentioned that the, the what do you call it? The under Undervalued. Undervalued, yeah, because it was a beautiful show. Yeah, it and was. So this character literally believed that he had no adversaries that there was nobody that he didn't love. <laughs> and so to go into that character's headspace and to, to live with that guy for the, through the 13 episodes in the five months was probably about the lightest, you know, spiritually wise in my head and, and positive outlook because the roles we play, they have bait times in our emotions. And you don't walk away from those just because you've left the set. You know, you go to sleep at night thinking about what you're going to be doing the next day. And if, the, if what you have to do the next day is something unsavory and violent, um, in my case, it's been a lot of times illegal. Uh, that, those, Are those we talking parts, about acting? or? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So those, those parts, they're haunting. And you don't, you don't get them out of your system. You try to shake them out. You, you, you go to therapists. You, <clears throat> you got to get the hate out. And, and I didn't have to do that when I played Sheriff Cody on Key West. And then, that was a great cast too, uh, Fisher Stevens and our friend Denise Crosby from Star Trek. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's I, I, I watched it when it was out and I was very enamored with it and I, and I wish it could have gone on more. I was, I was just gonna add knowing, you know, since we've hung out at conventions, Brian, um, just that the Zen Buddhist monk sounds much more in your line of what mm -hmm. your essence really is mm -hmm. than the venomous angry, you know, so that's a testament to your acting. Oh, well, thank you. That's true. I, I hope that's true. And I hope I get to sit next to you really soon. <laughs> <laughs> can, you say, can you say that just a little bit more pervy? I know, that was a little pervy. <laughs> what, do you mean? what are you talking about? I, am, I, I don't play perverts. All right, Brian, eat your oatmeal. Annabeth, uh, how about your favorite role? <laughs> Um, well, I was in a show on Showtime called Brotherhood that uh, was a it was just a really deep, meaningful, flawed character study for me that I very much enjoyed playing. It was kind of short lived and and underseen, like Key West, perhaps. Um, but it was a really, really important role for me. Uh, gosh, I've, I mean. I've, I've had so many that it's hard for me to say, I'm, first of all, I'm the worst at favorites because I am I'm such a Pisces where I love everything. And But so many roles have really affected me deeply from Mystic Pizza to Monica Reyes to, um, you know, I mean, Mrs. Dudley. I'm, I'm just really, they all work on me. Fair, that's absolutely mm -hmm. fair. Uh, Nicholas, bring us home. Um, you know, it, it's, it is a challenging question for sure. Uh, as I talked about earlier, the experience that I've had on the X-Files in terms of the friendships and the adventure and all that kind of stuff, just put it right near the top. There's no question. Um, I was able to do a film in Van in Canada, I should say, um, about a, a, a well-known Canadian serial killer. And I played the RCMP guy that was uh, chasing him. And that was a, that was a very fulfilling, uh, however dark, um, uh, experience that, uh, that I really enjoyed delving into for sure. Uh, I also was, um, I did a film in New Zealand for six months called Vertical Limit. And that had a great cast of like the great, late, great Bill Paxton and Robin Tunney, Chris O'Donnell, Scott Glenn. It, it was, uh, um, it was a really well, I good. For that. Damn it. Huh? I didn't, I auditioned for that. I remember that. Oh no, really? Yeah. yeah. And, and I couldn't get an audition for that. <laughs> It was six months in New Zealand, and I, you know, without being rude, I got paid a lot of money for it. I was super lucky that way, and I, you know, we shot at like twelve thousand feet and took helicopters to work uh, every day, and um, 
uh, you know, they rented me a big house on a lake with a boat right near the golf course. It was like the the, the world kind of everything sort of perfectly came together. I got to act and be adventurous and have a lot of fun at the same time. It was awesome. Wow, very nice. So New Zealand, everything, everything. New Zealand, is everything they say it is, yeah, and more. It's uh, it's a, you know, because there's two islands. The north end of the North Island is completely different than the south end of the South Island. It's, it's everything in between. You know, it's like the Crowded House song, Four Seasons in One Day, right? Like the whole, the, the, the mm -hmm. whole country is just totally varied and beautiful, and the people are amazing. Wow, very excellent. Number one Trek fan, thank you as always. It was a great question to start us off with. And what do we have next? Here's one from Kevin. What do you like the most about your character on the X-Files? <laughs> Go Annabeth. Beth. Um, I like, I very much liked Monica Reyes, how esoteric she was and how into sort of the, the mystical, um, and you know, I think I've always had that proclivity myself, but playing her gave me a greater access, especially because of all of the terminology I had to learn. And um, so, yeah, I would say her her optimism and her mystical outlook mm -hmm. for being yeah. an FBI agent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I'm in, uh, I, you know, uh, really loved my character's uh, stick to itiveness that took him through like seven seasons of the show. He refused to die. He had nine <laughs> lives. Um, How many times did you die? <laughs> Eleven, I think. I'm not exactly sure. But, um, you know, it was, uh, 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 and he was, um, he was. This isn't exactly a, a character of plus, but he was very much. His own, like he was all about. He wasn't on anybody's side. He was on his own side, yeah. and uh, and 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 uh, he he didn't take shit from anybody. That is true. Although Very he did right. take a bullet from from Mitch, so there's that. True <laughs> that. Go ahead. My character had infinite possibilities. The fact that he could not be killed that he replicated and that his input, his thought process wasn't emotional. It was, it was data input. Mm -hmm. So those were all new horizons for moi. Typecasting or what? I was like, Kevin, thank you. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys watched uh, Raised by Wolves yet? Raise my wolf. Raise my wolf. It's called Raise the trailer. Wolf. Ridley Scott's new show. Uh, yeah. it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Yes, my my. I haven't watched it my, myself. My housemates have, and they've been raving about it. So yeah, it's pretty cool. If you like, sort of, you know, sober, dry sci-fi. It's yeah. It's 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 very. As friend of mine said, it's very Ridley Scott. So if you like it that, it is very yeah. Ridley Scott. For yeah. <laughs> Sober, dry sci-fi. That's a soundbite, Nick. I'm gonna yeah. steal it. Yeah, do it. It's yours. Sober, dry sci-fi. God, yeah, excellent. What's next? And here's one from Kirsten. If you were writing a monster of the week style X Files episode, what kind of creature would you center it on? Hmm. President of the United States. Hey, oh, zing. zing! Hey, yo! I can't, I can't, I can't. Who, who wants to watch him on any? Aren't we all sick of it? <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. Some people. There's a lot of people, out, in fact, who want to watch him. That's what's, uh, that's yeah. what's remarkable about it. Yeah. Welcome to the Banana Republic of the United States, and our in our Banana Republic politics that out Banana Republics any Banana Republic that I can think of. Yeah, no, it's uh, anyway, that's off topic, but yeah. <laughs> monster. I don't know. Has there been a, a movie character with that size of an ego? Yeah, that'd be remarkable. You know, uh, what was that? I, what was that I just watched a while ago? Um, oh, Chernobyl. Um, I don't know if you watched Chernobyl, but it was really, 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 really good. And what was freaky about that show was there was no monster. But it was there all the time, and it was chasing everybody, and everybody was terrified of it. But you never once it was it was it was invisible. It was you know that's 
Yeah. That's so true, Nick. The director I'm working with right now, Mike Flanagan, um, he was asked this week, I think, on Twitter, what's your, what's your, what's the, the, like the most punk horror story you've ever seen? And he said Chernobyl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, if, I think if, if people out there haven't seen it, find it and watch it. It's everything about the show is like completely A1. It's, and, there's, uh, and there's really two monsters that you never see. Yeah, that's true. Right? You have you have the communist political machine exactly. that is everybody's oppressed by, yeah. and then you have radiation that you can't see. Yeah, yeah. Which is again, it's I mean, how different than that? How different from that is uh, what's currently going on in COVID, right? It's, mm. Mm, you that, can't see. That, that is something in X Files. They were often trying to subvert a plot to do a biological disaster or radiological disaster. Uh, it would be, it would have been curious if one actually happened on a smaller scale and how the characters and agents would have reacted to it. Well, I just did this at the, at the expense of a plug. I just did this. And, um, the, you know, you, that, that is the kind of penultimate story of, um, worldwide pandemic, um, uh, December 17th. Well, isn't it, it's an interesting thing that, you know, sci-fi and horror can be so prescient in a weird yeah. way. They can, they can um, and yet it, it's, it can be very much an exorcism when we face fake demons and fake yeah. monsters and all of that. But, mm -hmm. but, you know, now I think we're at kind of an interesting pivot where some of those things that we're afraid of are happening, you know? Absolutely. Listen, without getting wildly off track here, um, I tell you, uh, and uh, this is obviously a political thing to say, but you know, you're, you guys are really, really close now to losing uh, LGBTQ rights and uh, the right to, to, for women to have, uh, uh, you know, power over their own bodies and their own systems. I mean, you're really, really close. Y you are not far from the Handmaid's Tale at all, which is right now. Have a hard time believing that the America is a population will let that happen. But we're getting yeah, off topic. But I, it would, it would, well, I, that would freak me out if that happened, Nick. I would. Well, gotta, I, mean, I don't know where I'd be. I, I wouldn't know where I was living. Yeah. Well, I tell you what; those things can happen within the confines of the law, the strictures of the law, in 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 a way that you kind of they've happened, but you don't feel it or see it until until it, it, the impact is impressed on you, you know, and your freedoms. And, and those things can happen so quickly and without you even, um, mm. you know, feeling. So, is it fair to say then that the consensus is the monster would be social and political injustice? Yeah, there you go. Yes. There you go. Uh, a, little bit. a big green monster under the bed. Like Lovecraft country, right? A little bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So Kristen, thank you. That took us down as go. And here's one from Linda. Oh, did you keep anything from your time on the set? I, I can answer that first. Um, I did. I kept all of my, I have a bunch of Monica Reyes leather jackets because that was my, like, I, mean, I, I didn't steal them. I, I was, I, you know, I could take them. Sure. And then I also kept a um, set of, <coughs> uh, like, little beautiful bells that were kept on Monica Reyes' apartment door. Mm. Oh. Yeah. And did, right. did they did they give you your clothes? I think so. I had to pay half price for mine. Well, maybe I did. Maybe I did. I'm, that's probably what happened to me too. Okay, good. I was thinking there might be something else I'd have to be jealous of. Now I'd be jealous well, of both of you guys. I'm sure. I'm sure I probably did. Yes. Uh, so I, I, I kept. I have just about every single piece of cloth that I wore in the first two seasons. I've got the, the jackets, the overcoats, the sweater, uh, the suit, the, the pinstripe gray suit. They were, you know, they all custom fit. Why have to go shopping again? They were nice. That's true. That's because, true. Because then the never, never the the yeah, come have, around again. From the baseball episode, I have a baseball that was signed by uh, David and Jesse. So uh, and that's that's about it, I think. I, I was supposed to get that. I was supposed to get the the ice pick weapon, and I kept making calls about it. They promised me one, and here, this is my picture of the ice pick weapon they gave me. Isn't that nice? I didn't know. <laughs> it was 
I also I also kept my husband. I mean, I met Wade on the set of the X Files, so I kept him. And 19 years later, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have uh, I have everything. I have everything that was ever given to me and everything that I could uh, walk away with that, that, that I was allowed to walk away with. Um, yeah. I have jackets and cups and, and games and lunch boxes and knives and uh, baseball jerseys and photographs and on set, uh, you know, uh, coded, you know, uh, continuity. Sh I have like literally everything. And I was going to say that um, I'm going to... Uh, bring a bunch out in my chat if anybody wants to see that stuff. It's been hidden in it. Like I never take it out because I've never, I don't have no need to, um, but I'm going to take it out during the chat. So if anybody's interested in seeing a bunch of that stuff. Yeah. I, I, I can, really you, can, can you give us one tease for our audience? Yeah. One tease? Yeah, give us one tease. I kept scripts also. I think we all kept our scripts, right, Annabeth? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. yeah that was the episode. I have, the, I have a baseball yeah. from that show. Me too. You, is it signed by Jesse and David? It is. I think it's signed by Chris Carter, too. Oh, look at, see that? He's like upping everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, like, I'm a, I'm also like, I'm a, a um, amateur hoarder. So uh, everything, I keep everything. It's, it's kind of well, bad. No. Did everybody see that? I think it was last week or this week. I can't remember anymore, but Chris Carter just donated a bunch of his uh, archives to a museum. And I think I saw it online. Mm -hmm. My, Point being that um, cool. Nick, your stuff that's in invaluable. Well, I'm. It's my also my retirement package. I'm gonna say for your kids, college. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there an X Files museum somewhere, or a big exhibit from the X Files in a museum somewhere? Well, I, it hmm. just. I, I'll text you privately later, or I'm sure you can. People online can. I just know that that something massive was was given, and it's quite extensive. Right. I wonder, is there anything at the, um, you know, what's the famous thing? Rip, you, Ripley's? You know? No, the, you know, they got the set. Smithsonian. I wonder if there's anything at the Smithsonian. It's, it's Smithsonian, both science. So, there you go. Uh, Linda, thank you. That was a fantastic one. And a reminder to our audience, if you'd like to chat with our panelists like I am now or purchase a personalized autograph, please sign up at galaxycon.com. And while you're there, you'll see a listing of other programming we have coming up in the future. And let's go ahead and roll another one. And from Florence, what has been your favorite memory of shooting that you still remember fondly? Hmm. I got an easy one. I, was, uh, I spent the night on that bridge in Vancouver with Jillian Anderson, and and we we sat in that car and talked when during the first season when she was young and and before she became famous, and it was just this sweet just her and I in this car in between shots for several hours. Mm -hmm. nice. And Jillian, I remember it fondly. You were very kind and sweet. She was very kind and sweet just an hour and a half ago when we did uh, one of these with her. I have, uh, you know, there's just, uh, what was the question again? A precisely favorite oh. memory. I, I don't. There's, uh, I, I literally don't have a favorite one because there's just so, there's so, so many um, that if I had to pick one, I'm not sure that I could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in Nick's camp too, but I do remember, um, I, re I mean, yeah, it's just such a flood of memories, but I did, I loved everything about shooting 4D and Audrey Polly. Um, and I, I remember for some reason shooting deep, deep in the valley and it was like after an alien ship had landed and just being just amazed at the extent of production design and all of that, like just like, oh, there's a ship, you know? <laughs> It's so many freaking amazing memories. I concur. When I walked on that set and saw that inside a soundstage, there was half of a submarine sticking out of the floor, <laughs> I was like, what? What kind of a show? What feature film am I on? <laughs> uh, absolutely. All right, Nicholas, whose tail is that? That's my cat. He just was, he was at the door making racket, so I decided to let him in. What's his name? Vinny. Oh. Vinny, you hey. Want to hey, yo, Vinny. Yo, Vinny, get back to your litter box. Oh, hey. Uh, this is Pumpkin. 
Pumpkin. Oh, pumpkin. Oh, pumpkin. Good time for pie Halloween. My yeah, dog, uh, my dog who was still alive, would be like in my lap on the table. He's like 120 pounds, was a 120 pound dog, but he'd be like right in here. Yeah, I, I pulled this one out of it while jogging in October out of a bush as a kitten. So, no and, kidding, and, really? And, oh, yeah, hence the name Pumpkin. That a boy, that's great. So, and Florence, thank you. That took us down some fun roads. And what do we have next? From Jenny, what is the strangest thing you've been asked to autograph? Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, uh, it was uh, someone's forearm. I think it was forearm or, or arm. Um, because I didn't, I was so sort of naive to the fact that people did that. And I, when, when this wonderful fan came back, she, I was like, wait, no, you didn't, that wasn't real. Like I signed it. <laughs> no, no, that's not tattooed. <laughs> but it was. So yeah. Oh, oh no, an arm. The, the, the tattoo. Well, that's, that's not the craziest place other guests have said they've done tattoo autographs for. So I, I'm, I'm I'm pretty safe. I've signed like tummies and abdomens and um, uh, lower chest, upper nipple areas. You know, I mean, like there's, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I I have signed a fair number of bosoms with a sharpie. What? How yeah, they want you to just even right, right there in the cleavage. <laughs> and while they're doing it, they have no problem, you know, pulling the. Uh, the boulder holder a little open so that you get a little bit more of a rush while you're sitting there at your table at the convention. Oh. It was really nice. And I, I hope you have good watching this. You ladies that asked me to do that, thank you very much. It was, I got more out of it than you did. <laughs> but was it as enjoyable as sitting next to Annabeth? Oh, no. That's, oh. Uh, that's my, con that, that is my favorite uh, convention memory <laughs> is hearing her giggle for two days. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Annabeth is one of those people who's like super kind and gentle and 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 open with uh, with with anybody that 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 steps up to meet her. Um, it's it's a uh, it's um, inspiring. Oh gosh, I you're, none of us are assholes. That's for sure. No, uh, Nick, Annabeth. Nick said the same thing about me a couple of weeks ago. I know. I that's a couple of weeks ago. But uh, my husband, you right now, like you know, after. <laughs> is, is your husband up there in Vancouver? Yeah, we all are. My kids and my husband. Oh, fantastic! It's good What's amazing is I. It's amazing. It's wonderful. And I'm, I have the honor and pleasure of working with Nick's wife, Crystal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, and I love the kind of intersections that, that occur. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody about the show. Annabelle. Yeah, please. Well, I, it's, a, it's a new show for Netflix um, of the same of uh, Mike Flanagan, who did Haunting of Hill House and Bly Manor. And uh, this is called Midnight Mass. We're shooting it now. And it will be as thrilling as everything else he does. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. And Jenny. I, I oh. just was going to say, you know, I'm a snob when it comes to a, a number of things. One of them is like scary movies. Like things just don't scare me. The Exorcist scared the living shit out of me when, when I was a boy. But most stuff really doesn't scare me. None of that stuff scares me. But The Haunting of Hill House scared me. It actually was scary. For the first yeah. time in a long time, it was something that I watched that actually kind of like gave me shivers, you know. So if you haven't seen it, see it. It's really good. Sure. Uh, Jenny, thank you. That was a wonderful question. What do we have next? From Jamie, what did you learn about yourself either as an actor or a person after working on The X-Files? Hmm. Hmm. Good question. Hmm. Go for it, Nick. Um, I learned uh, that I could... Uh, put the like my um, when I was in high school, I played a lot of sports and I uh, did I was kind of like did as much as I could and, and and I learned that I could bring my athleticism to to acting. Um, you know, I've, I've been a, always been a fan of like uh, not uh, Harrison Ford's physical stuff that he does uh, with pain and with you know that kind of stuff and and so it, 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 
to me, that's that's uh, that's a physicality, and so I was always given the, the I was given a lot of chances to to sort of employ my what I I guess was is athleticism I don't know, and um, and uh, that and uh, also that I could I could compete uh, by which I mean I could be on a show w with that was sort of world renowned and I could be a part of that and and um, and they continued to hire me so I must be um, I, I must have enough of what it takes to to be a part of a hit show so i mean that, that and you know you take that through your entire career and through your life is that you know yeah listen man i i, I i'm i i've got something to offer i you know um because sometimes you lose sight of that or me personally as an actor you if you don't work for a while or whatever you or you're not working on the type of projects you want to work on you start to feel like maybe you don't have what it takes and all i have to do is think no that's not true i was i was part of a very 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 popular show to this day so that was a big big life lesson for me you know what i've learned again to add on to what nick said which i think is is actually a good uh, sports analogy as well as and i've learned it sort of in retrospect in missing this aspect but i learned very much that i like being a part of a team i like mm -hmm. being a part of a family and all going towards a communal creative goal. Um, and I miss that. I, I, I think, you know, there's nothing that, when you're a part of a show, especially when like Nick and Brian, when you guys were on it for seven to eight years or whatever, it just, it is, there's, you know, you have all of your little ups and downs and dysfunctions, but, but I really learned that um, I like being a part of, of a, a, a TV family or a, a community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you're not, uh, or if you haven't been, um, you look at that as, you know, with, with envy and you think, God, I really want to be a part of like, you know, the West Wing oh. or, you know, ER or something where, you know, like there's this big group of people and they work together all the time, you know. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. That's, I, it's I Echo Annabeth's uh, retrospective view of, of the filial connections that we got. And, and it's the only time that I've had that. I, uh, and to have another eight year connection with the show again, will that happen? That's, that's so mm -hmm. rare. It's so yeah, rare. And, and then personally on a, on a different note, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a theater trained actor. And in the theater, you do what the director says, and that's it. You don't argue with it. You can have a few creative discussions, but when push comes to shove, you don't get to push back hard. Um, there, was some, there were some real convoluted stories that happened when I first got this part. The, the number one convoluted story was that this character was a fully fleshed out character that was going to get to do, have some real meaty character scenes. And then I couldn't read the second script because it hadn't been written yet. And my spotty sense had gone off. So when I when I got to the set the second day, I uh, went up to like the second second AD, and I'm like, "Hey, I forgot my script of the second show. Do you ha could I look at yours?" And he goes, "Sure." So immediately I had the script that I'd been told on more than one occasion hadn't been written, <laughs> and I leafed through the pages to see how my character was doing because I was assured that he was not an automaton who just went around and whacked people in the neck. <clears throat> Second script had been written. He was just an automaton who went around and whacked people on the neck. The scene with this submarine, he's just chasing David around and <clears throat> I'm going to kill you. You know, I, I, uh, I went up to Bob Goodwin who <laughs> and I said, Bob, uh, I, I know you're not a part of this, but this is the story I've been given. Uh, this is, I'm holding here the script that hasn't been written. <laughs> this guy's an automaton who just runs around and whacks people. And uh, he's a, he's a shapeshifter. Uh, shapeshift me into another character. I want to leave. I don't want to be here anymore. Um, now, I would not have done that had it been a week later. <laughs> And the show had won the Emmy for Best Drama. I didn't oh. know anything about the show, mind you. I had just been cast in it. I I figured these were, you know, it was a, a television show trying to make it. And I've been in a lot of television shows that were trying to make it. So I 
I said, uh, anyway, Bob says, well, let me find out what's going on. And he's, uh, Brian, I'll get this taken care of. Two hours later, six pages show up where David and I have a scene on the submarine. And I'm like, I'm in. This is good. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, wow. Jamie, thank you so much for that. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast of X-Files, but it does not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our guests like I have today or purchase an autograph, please head over to GalaxyCon.com. And while you're there, check out our schedule of upcoming events like this one. Panelists, any final words for our audience before we go? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, as I said, I'm going to have a bunch of so, uh, some memorabilia to share in, in my guest room, your uh, guest chat. Get guest room. Your guest room <laughs> in, my, in my toilet. So anybody who uh, no, um, uh, really, what I want to say is uh, it's a, and I don't want to steal anybody's thunder here, but listen, it's obviously a very, very difficult time, not just in your house or your city or your state or province or country, but all over the world. And people are watching probably right now from all over the world. And I just want you to know that I'm thinking about you and and this will this too shall pass. And I just really want every I really hope that everyone is safe and content and engaged and uh, and that their friends and family uh, and their bubble are, are the same safe and happy and uh, engaged. Absolutely. Thank you. And what can you tell us? Can you tell us anything more about the stand? Oh yeah, it uh, comes out December seventeenth. Nine episodes, CBS uh, on uh, uh, CBS uh, 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 All Access. Yeah. Um, great cast, great great cast. I, I don't necessarily include myself on that, but there's a it's a really really good group of people, and I feel like uh, they finally able to capture uh, what this book is. As thick as yeah. that is, um, they've finally been able to kind of um, to bring that that story. To the screen, they. I don't think they successfully did it in the nineties. I think this does it. Well, I when I heard Whoopi as as as, as Abigail, I was like, yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh, Alexander Skarsgård, James Mars. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a great yeah, cast. Absolutely, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. So, yeah. uh, Annabeth, how about you? Oh gosh, well, yes, I. It is a hard time, Nick. Everything Nick just said, um, and. To all who are here, you know, thank you for for being here, and mm -hmm. um, you know, it's an honor. I do find this is a platform that we can all oddly connect, stay connected. Um, so thank you, and yeah, sending love and good wishes to everyone. Thank you so much. And Brian, any final words? Yes, thank you for being here. Um, Annabeth spent half of the time plugging her new show, so I'm gonna. Plug mine too. She did, and that's an exaggeration, Annabeth. You know, you know, I'm, you know I'm fond of you. No. Um, <laughs> you know what's really effective, Brian? When you get really, really, really close to the screen, that's when it really everything comes together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think? That looks good. So, listen. Um, you know, one of the toughest questions isn't this? Isn't it? Echo in here, you guys. That. When, when friends you know go, you should have been in, mm. and then they complete the sentence, and I'm like, yeah, well, get me an audition for it. You have no idea how hard it is to get an audition. You know, mm -hmm. I, I talk to uh, acting classes, because I'm a trained actor, and I ask the question, how many A-list movies have, have I got to audition for in 36 years? And the, the, the movies that had it not didn't win an Oscar, but say were nominated for an Oscar. And... People guess 10, people guess, you know, one per year. It's a big goose egg, guys. I, 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 36 years, I haven't got to audition for one movie that was even nominated for an Oscar other than special effects. This year, however, I got to make a self-tape. Have you guys heard of the Coen brothers? Yes. Yes, you did. I thought you were my self tape got me an audition for Joel Cohen. Yes. And I got to meet Joel. And to my shock, Fran McDormand was at the audition. And they're doing Macbeth. Fran McDormand read Macbeth. I did I got to read Macbeth with Fran McDormand, and she was the best Macbeth I've ever seen. <laughs> and anyway, Denzel Washington's playing Macbeth, and yours truly got the job. Uh 
I'm in uh, Macbeth. And That's I got. I cannot wait to see that. Brian. Right. So cool, Brian. So I know. I'm. I, I. I'm still like. I still like when I get to tell the story. It's like I am telling that story, and there, it does ring true. It's um, true. Good things come to good people, Brian. Eventually. Yes. A quick side note: We got shut down in March, like everybody did, and they were the first and only production back at Warner Brothers at the end of July, hmm. and th that was an eye-opening experience because Warner Brothers was shut down. We were the only people there. As actors, you normally have to park across the street and walk in. All the actors got drive-ons. The soundstage where they shoot used to shoot Everybody Loves Raymond was a COVID testing facility. Oh, All yeah. the actors are tested once or twice a day, as you probably mm -hmm. are now, guys. Uh, it was... And to see Warner Brothers as a ghost town in the middle of the summer when normally a dozen productions are there it was an eerie feeling and it and it reminded you and 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 showed how much of of industry is at a halt yeah yeah and that, that we were just creeping our way you know tiptoeing back into the shallow waters of recovering from the epidemic and so i wish all fans and everybody a, a fast and speedy recovery totally. and um it's been great here to chat with you guys Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It has been my absolute pleasure to serve you all today. Gentlemen and ladies, thank you so much for joining us here at the Galaxy Kind Virtual Stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today, and thank you for all your great questions. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care, and please keep washing those hands. Bye, guys. <laughs>